Okay, where we left off yesterday, we we're approaching a hill. And when I say hill, I mean mountain. It was like uphill, it was, we just grounded out. When we got to the top, we had the interesting experience of being bathed in sweat while freezing cold. <laughs> and anyway, so then we went to a hostel and this was a fantastic hostel compared to the last one. Well, the last one was really kind of rickety and it had like IKEA furniture, which we thought was gonna collapse. This one's awesome. And it's like, we've got the whole place to ourselves. We just came out from breakfast. Breakfast was really good and cost two euros. And, you know, effectively I tried not to make myself a glutton. It's always a challenge. <laughs> um, yeah, PJ's complaining about the cold, but you know, the, all things, you need constants in your life. Other than that, today we've got another, straight away we're back into the climb. We're about halfway up, so we've got another about half an hour to an hour of climbing. And then the rest of the day should be fairly easy with about 40 uh, kilometres of mainly flat with a couple of ups and a couple of downs in there. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it and I'm looking forward to the next place. So I've already booked the accommodation in the next area. Dave sent us a little email saying can't have bicycles so we're going to see how that works out. And um, that's about it. Beautiful night's sleep, beautiful place. PJ, I'll turn around and just show you the back of the building now. But we step, we were in the basement and it was really lovely. I let Charlie know that there was a squeak and a lot of resistance. That was called the hill. And the bike? <laughs> it's called the hill. Because I'm all about, you know, autonomy and empowerment. So the maintenance manager can now step up, take leadership, and fix the bike. We stopped for lunch because, uh, well, it's lunchtime and, you know, we come, we see, we eat. And we, the eating is a very important part of it. You know, we'd hate if we uh, put in too much effort and started losing weight. That would be a damn shame, <laughs> you know. Also, I think PJ was going to kill me. So, for some reason, the road surface here is like sticky and yeah. you don't seem to be moving forward very much for the effort that you're putting in. But anyway. And it's there's fun. a slight headwind, but it's not too bad. <laughs> but he tell you, a slight headwind is and too much headwind. The local cat has decided to join us. Charlie doesn't think this is ice. Charlie thinks this is Charlie thinks this is marble. Let's have a look.
We're in another town that we've never heard of that's also awesome. We just came through some Roman um, walls that seem to be completely intact. And we're in a little medieval village. It's really cool. The ride here was quite difficult. I don't know, the tarmac felt like it was made out of glue and it didn't want to let us ride, except for the last five kilometers, which was just like beautiful tarmac. And we just went straight into town, which was fantastic. PJ's really been putting it in hard today. She's been falling far, far behind, but she's just powered on and still managed to get through. Not a word of complaint, which is really unusual. So uh, she's just a little battler today, a little champion. So uh, we're looking forward to our accommodation. Uh, it's in the old town. I seem to always book in the old town, PJ says. She's more of a party girl. She likes to be out in the in the in the uh, fancy places. Or on yeah, the I'll very edge of town, so we don't have to ride so far before we get in. <laughs> yeah, there is that. She's like, as soon as the town hits, she wants the accommodation right there. Yeah. But coming into this town, it was really kind of ugly coming into town. Like it was a very sort of industrial, ugly place. Okay, uh, PJ, I'll put the name of the town, and we'll have another debrief later. After a hard day's riding, it's always good to have a rest at the end. Unfortunately, no one's told Charles this. Okay, today was the PJ care day. So uh, we started off and we rode and it was straight up hills to start off with. And by the time we got to the first hill, I thought, end of the first hill, I thought I'd lost PJ. So I left the bike and started walking back, but she turned up, you know, all bad pennies do. Um, then we kept going and then there was a point where I thought I better ride with PJ or she's going to kill me. Okay, so then I spent the time with PJ. Now there was something really weird going on. Like we were riding, both of us felt it um, and we did some bike maintenance because we thought, you know, there's something going wrong with the bikes. But it's like the tarmac here like sticks to the wheels and it just felt like riding in molasses the whole way until the last five kilometers. And the last five kilometers we just went pshh, it was like amazing. So there was definitely something going on with the road. Like it was just sucking sucking the energy completely out of us. But there was a point where I just rode behind PJ within like three or four feet of her because I really thought if I rode off into the distance, you know, I should just keep riding. <laughs> uh, we're staying in the old square again. So the old square is just outside in this beautiful apartment. It's really lovely. And today, my, my daughter reminded me, uh, Megan, that it's my birthday tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm going to be like 53. Happy birthday, Charlie. Yeah, 53. So this whole trip is... You to don't do look a day over 63. That is true. This whole <laughs> trip is to decide whether I should retire or not because, uh, you know, I'm getting on. But, you know, I, I loved being a manual sort of worker and working out in the field and doing everything. But since I've become a desk-bound worker... 
I, I really, it's not doing my body any good and it's not what I like to do. Like I don't like spending all day pushing one piece of paper from one side of the table to the other side of the table. And man management, I, I've been told I'm good at it, but I, I'm not, I don't like it. I find it exhausting. So, you know, the problem is every job I've ever had has been great. And the job I have now is, you know, the people, I love the people I work with and they seem to like me and it seems difficult to retire. Or, you know, like men, or at least myself, get a lot of self-worth about what you're doing in your life. And, and you know, I find it difficult to think about retiring. But I must admit, I'm really enjoying this trip. Like, I'm really enjoying it. And it's great to have PJ along. And uh, I would never do it if I was just by myself. I think I would find it too boring. But with the Kraken along with me, you know, it's it's very enjoyable. Okay, so that's it. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, my birthday. And uh, I'm sure PJ will have cooked me a cake. And, you know, <laughs> like... <laughs> You're such an optimist, I love you. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there'll be lots of things for me tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Today, Charlie did a bit of a haiku. I was having a really rough time on the bike. I've been feeling really strong on the bike, but then today the weird tarmac was just messing with my head and I was riding along feeling really bored and lonely and wishing that he had hung back and we were riding together. And then suddenly I turned up and he had stopped and walked back to wait for me and then stuck beside me like glue playing cheesy music uh to to keep me going so well done charlie there's hope for him yet <laughs> and um we don't usually do birthdays much but i'm pretty excited about tomorrow i think it's a great birthday to celebrate thanks charlie To the garden